Um, yeah, it was, I think I said a post game, it's why we play exhibition games. Um, you know, I think there were some, uh, some, some nerves and some, uh, sped up play on both ends. And yet I thought defensively we had some, some really positive energy and, and, uh, you take away, uh, you know, a couple banked in threes and, and, and all of a sudden your defense looks really, really good. Uh, really positive, uh, keeping them off the line, something we talked at, at length about. Uh, Trent really only had a couple of silly reaches that we were trying to get out of, out of our program. Uh, and then I thought uh, uh, our ability to get to the line uh, are things that you, even though we didn't shoot great, uh, and if you'll remember, I think we've done this just about every year we've gone over there. Uh, we shot 83 or 84% in the scrimmage of South Carolina. We, we haven't been in that in the, in the uh, State Farm Center. So it was uh, a little adjustment to get going in there. We, I think we're a good free throw shooting team, and we'll see that play out. But uh, getting to the line was, was big. And, we got 47% of our misses back, which is a, which was a great number, and yet I, I was really disappointed in our consistent effort going to the glass. So we've got to we've got to clean that up a little bit, uh, and I talked about that. But uh, uh, you know, I, I loved our balance in our field goal attempts. I thought we had a nice uh, a nice mix of, of of especially after the first eight, six, seven, eight minutes. Uh, where we were two of 11 from the three, I thought we had a nice mix after that. So uh, that's what we're looking for and, and uh, excited to get this thing up and running tomorrow, get a team in Nichols State who's uh, very, very athletic. They play extremely hard. They're not a real big team in terms of size, but they have big wings uh, and they're an old team. Uh, they're a team that has uh, a lot of upperclassmen. So. Uh, they play very much what we call up the line, on the line defensively. They try to take everything away. They'll run and jump you. They'll press you. Uh, they try to turn it into a very athletic game. We've got to be very disciplined. Uh, we've got to be ball tough. And, uh, and yet, sometimes it's not the prettiest game in the world when you play a team like this. Uh, you've just got to go make basketball plays. So uh, we're excited, and, and uh, we've got our hands full. After looking over the film, were there certain lineups or certain pairings that stood out to you after the Lewis exhibition game? Well, I, yeah, we had some positives with a little bit of everything, to be honest. And, and, and we're trying to, uh, you know, we, we only played Georgie four minutes and 57 seconds uh, at the five. And, uh, uh, you know, we played him 18 or 19 minutes close to 19 minutes at, at the four spot, uh, <clears throat> that's got to shift a little bit. I went too long in a stretch uh, with Kofi. I played Kofi six and a half, seven minutes straight. Uh, I'll try to avoid that uh, in the future. Uh, but, you know, I thought we got really good good play out of, out of Ben. I thought we got good play out of Kipper, so that gives us some, some, some comfort there, uh, knowing that... Uh, uh, we don't have to play Kofi in those long stretches. So I like that. I felt really positive about that. Uh, DeMonte graded out defensively uh, exceptionally well. I feel good about that. We've got to continue to get uh, more rebounding from Io, uh, more rebounding from, from Trent on the defensive end. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we, there was a little bit of everything in, in, in that exhibition. Brent, what's the expectation for just – how much you can play, Benjamin, and how much you put on his plate right away. Well, you obviously saw that I didn't play him in the first half. I mean, it's I, you know, you, there's a fragile line between playing and playing well, and and wanting him to play well, not giving him a, a chance to really fail. Um, four practices. It was his fifth. Um, that's not very many, and yet uh, I was really pleased. But he came out and he played and he stayed in his lane, so to speak. Terminology didn't try to do too much. 
And um, you know, the very first play was him was a free throw. He ran our little free throw play, uh, almost saved it on a missed free throw. Uh, that's how tuned in and dialed in he was. And then defensively, he was he was great. So uh, expectations are a little higher, and um, and maybe a, a little more frequent. Uh, but uh, again, it's a, it's a comfort thing until he gets really dialed in, uh, and his conditioning is still maturing as we as we as we move along. That he stayed in his lane maybe at having just four practices in. Is that a rarity where maybe he you know he's back on the court and <coughs> some guys try and do too much or? Well, I think it speaks to his intelligence. I think it speaks to his commitment. Uh, you know, I think his his. Uh, uh, understanding of film, understanding what we do. His basketball IQ is through the roof. He's a very, very high, uh, highly intelligent kid in terms of, of what he understands and what he processes. And, and we were able to get him out in situations and just walk through things uh, with him. Not full speed, but walk through them. So he had an understanding of what we were trying to do. But actually until you get out there and you get going full speed and bodies hitting you and uh, it's a different animal, but uh, I, yeah, I was really pleased with that. And uh, you know, his his uh, his mental approach, had it not been what it was, would have strapped him. And and it does players, uh, but his 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 ability to pick things up has enabled him to find the court. Brad, a, lot the guy, a lot of these guys in a pretty short time have been through quite a bit, from close losses to big wins. In what ways does that help you guys on the floor this year? Well, it's experience. Experience is everything. And, you know, it's, it's even though you look at us in, on paper, we're really a young basketball team. I, you know, it's, but um, uh, game experience, we've been through it. So we've been able to experience the, the Gonzaga loss and, and the quick turnaround at, at, that, was, that you had and the Michigan State win or the Ohio State win. So you experience those things, and those are positives because now we've been through it. Now we've got guys telling them what, what to expect and what's coming instead of me as a coach trying to tell them what's coming. And, and it's a different deal when, the, when they're listening to it from their peers. So experience is a big part of that. All right, how much of a challenge is it three games in less than a week at the beginning of the season is you know, how does conditioning factor into all that? Well, conditioning's a piece of it. You know, we're having to manage that. It's been a, it's been a, uh, you know, it's it's been a, we've been on the go since Friday. Friday night was a was a late late night for us. You know, and as as a coaching staff, and you burn it at both ends. We went at ten o'clock Saturday morning uh, to get it done before the football game, and still give our guys. We felt like we could give our guys really off twenty four hours until Sunday afternoon's practice to start prepping for for Nichols. So now you go, you know, Sunday, Monday, play Tuesday. Uh, we got to come back Wednesday morning. Uh, we'll leave Wednesday afternoon. And then uh, you'll make the trip, play on Friday, and then quick turn again on Saturday. So it's a lot there. It's a lot for them to process. Uh, we've got a great staff. We'll, we'll have them prepared. But again, it's it's the part of uh, of, of recovery, uh, understanding your bodies, un understanding how important sleep is. All of those things turn into the keys <coughs> to being successful, and and we're talking to our guys at length about those things. Right, Brad, right, you the level of comfort in being able to turn to a kipper, a fifth-year senior, and he's your first front court guy off the bench, and have everything at least know what he's doing and be okay and have that level of experience? Well, and I think that's one thing that you guys will find out and you guys know with me, I'm as, I'm as, I'm looking for as much productivity off the bench uh, as I do in starting five. And you want a, you want some punch and you want some, some, excuse me, you want some value uh, when you, when you, when you come in off the bench. And Kipper's a guy that's, uh, has had big moments and had a lot of success. He's also a guy that you know is, not going to be all worked up and nervous and uptight and and uh, you know kind of what you're getting with him. So yeah, we feel we feel really well, really positive about that right now and felt good about his minutes the other night. He stepped up a lot of Kofi in his first collegiate game. What do you think of his performance in that exhibition? Is that hopefully a sign of things to come? 
Yeah, you know, there were some things I didn't like about the way he played. You know, I thought he got tired and, and didn't rebound as, as well as he's capable. I thought he left three or four rebounds out there. Uh, <clears throat> I asked him after the game, when I got done talking to you guys, he was downstairs. I said, what'd you think? He said, man, I got tired. You know, he goes, I got tired. And, uh, you know, I left him in that long segment, uh, six and a half, seven minutes. That's too long. Uh, but I thought he did some really positive things. He occupied space. I thought uh, there was an opportunity in the first half to go block a shot, and he stood flat-footed uh, at our end. And, and, you know, then in the second half, he was, he was much better protecting the rim. But, uh, you know, all in all, you know, give it a B. He's got, he's got a lot of room to improve. He brought the, brought the ball down a couple times. Uh, we've worked a, a lot here in the last few days at not doing that. Uh, it's a habit he's got to get, get out of. He's been so big and strong, it's never been a, never been a problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, those are freshman things and things he'll grow from. This morning, Io said this coming week is – the biggest week for Illinois basketball in recent memory. Do you agree with that, or what do you think makes them come to that assessment? Power five team on the road, first week of the season, really? I mean, playing those two teams? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty big. I don't know the last time that's been done. Um, you know, i got to exclude Lon. Lon. I think Lon did it last year, opening up at Texas San Antonio. And, and I'm sure it has been done. But, yeah, when you're going on the road, you're going to face – a sellout crowd at Grand Canyon, one of the great home courts in the country, and then one of the historically great programs in the last 30 years at Arizona on the road uh, the first week of the season. It's a great test. I'm excited about it. As far as Kofi and Georgie are concerned, how did you like their camaraderie? Had their play together at high-low game, had a couple nice passes there, but those two working together on the court. Yeah, it's a work in progress. I thought there were some good things. I thought Georgie got a little loose a couple times uh, with a couple passes. Uh, and, and maybe he looked too much to try to force it in there. Uh, we, talk, we talked about that. We've got we've to create a little more movement. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, they're going to play well together. They're both extremely unselfish. Kofi returned the favor to Georgie. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the – Unsung things about Kofi is he's a really good passer as well. So, uh, you know, as things and defenses change, I think we'll uh, we'll see that be a pretty good duo. Brad, year three for you now. You've been in Champaign for a little while. How has the lead up to this season been for you? Has it, has it felt any different? Or are you starting to oh, settle in? Yeah, or? it's a lot different. <laughs> it's a lot different. You know, and it's our players make that happen. You know, you feel great about uh, having veterans back. You feel great about... Uh, the addition of certain players to your program every year. And so you're growing there. You're, you're excited about the direction recruiting's going. You, you're, there's a comfort uh, around the office now. There's a comfort on the court now. Uh, all of that is, is um, positive. And then, yeah, there's expectation. That's, we're, we're never running from that. That's you know, that if you guys think I'm going to run from that and run from a good fight, you're, you guys don't know me very well. I think that's the one thing that, that we're excited about it, are those challenges. And, and uh, we think we've, we've, we've got uh, a locker room full of guys who are really proud to wear that jersey, and, and, and that's, that feels good as a coach. Heading into tomorrow's game, what are just some of the questions you're looking to have answered about just what this team is? You know, I, 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 we talk about this a lot. You know, we're still trying to, what is our identity? When, when that opposing team and that opposing coach uh, watches us play, what does he see? And, and knowing what we're going to try, what we want to try to be. And I think every single day, uh, we had 10 kills the other night, what we call a kill. That's three consecutive stops. We had 10 of those in the game. That's part of our identity hard contested twos, and then one shot. And uh, if you do that enough, you can sustain a bad start like we had. You can sustain really poor shooting because we can't control shooting. That's what I want it to be. Are we getting there yet? We'll see. Another opponent, another opportunity. That's, that's toughness. That's what it takes to go on the road 
and, and, and when. It's what it takes to sustain every single night. We don't talk about playing an opponent. They're nameless and faceless. It's about us going and do our job, handling the scouting report that, that game, and, um, and being that, that type of team. So leading into this, <clears throat> you've talked about Trent's growth as a leader, maybe more vocal. Have you seen something similar in his game? It seemed like against Lewis, he picked the spots and then was obviously pretty successful. He graded out defensively zero points against, which is almost impossible to do. Uh, he makes so many things easy because of experience and understanding. Defensively, he's hardly in the wrong, ever in the wrong position. Uh, offensively, he's playing with tremendous confidence. He's running the floor every single time when he's not playing at the point. Uh, he has shot, knock on wood, he shot 52% uh, through today was our 26th practice from the three. Uh, he's just playing with tremendous confidence and like a, like a savvy, savvy veteran. And, uh, uh, you know, he played 19 minutes the other night. He had the two silly fouls, but, boy, everything else was, was just, just rock, rock solid. Coach, you mentioned a little bit earlier how it feels different coming into year three now. In your first two years, you talked about building the culture that you want to see that Illinois basketball has. Do you feel like going into year three, that culture is here, or do you feel like there's still some steps that need to be taken this season to get to the culture that you want to have? Yeah, build your culture never stops. That's an everyday deal. That's an everyday thing. That's our staff doing it. That's our players working towards it. Uh, you know, I don't think that the great programs in the history of team sports ever stop working on building their culture. I feel really, really good about it. Uh, you know, I know we practiced this morning, and when I left, there was a couple guys in the gym working out, working on things that they have to be better. There were a couple guys in the office. Uh, those are the little things that, uh, that we handle. I get midweek grades or week-to-week -week grades, and I see guys taking care of their, their responsibility in the classes and going to classes and doing the right things. And um, You know, not everybody's perfect, but, man, we're starting to do a lot of really, really good things, and that's our culture is, is, is being an everyday guy and, and doing what we're supposed to do. You know, you said you were still, you, that you were just tinkering with the starting lineup against Lewis, and we know how you feel about starting lineups and bench and the minutes. And so uh, whatsoever, but do you, would you prefer to have a wing in that uh, three spot starting? That way you could keep Felice coming off the bench to help out with that, or are you, are you okay with that starting lineup of having him starting? It has to be Felice. I, or just, I, yeah, no, I, just going off no, the lineup. You and, no, and I, I, I'll be honest. I, I, uh, I think there's some, there's some scouting stuff that's out there that, that teams have to deal with with that group on the court. I think they can, they can pose some matchup problems. I'm going to keep prodding them to do more. I need those three guys to continue to do more. There can't be a gap. There can't be a weakness. Uh, and yet there's something a little bit different when they're not in there. Um, I, I'm still weighing that. I don't know. Uh, again, I don't. It didn't play a ton of minutes together, in particular because of Trent's foul trouble, uh, foul problems. But uh, you know, I think they played uh, sixty-two percent of the time. I think was the number, uh, and that will probably go up a little bit. But uh, but again, you know, Demonte gives us something. Allen gives us something uh, a little different. Kipper, when we slide him over, gives us something different. So. Uh, it gives me a, give, gives me some nice options. We'll see. Matchups will have something to do with it too. Coach, do you think programs can <coughs> feed off of each other? The football team has three wins in a row. You guys start the season. Can you guys play off each other? Most contagious thing going is winning. Most contagious thing going is winning. I, I say it all the time. There, there's, there's. Uh, I was very, very blessed when I was at Oklahoma State. I got to live that. And, and winning programs. Just it just feeds off each other. We were uh, that time we were the only program that hadn't been in the NCAA tournament, if I'm not mistaken. And, and there's nothing better than that excitement that's generated from uh, the players having their winning locker room moments to the fans to 
to you guys. Everybody's got an upbeat uh, swagger about them when they walk around, and their heads held high, and that's a lot of fun. And uh, so uh, the job they're doing is incredible, and, and uh, absolutely we're going to try to feed off that uh, every way we can. Brad, there was a play on Friday that Kofi nearly had a pretty good dunk, but he was fouled. You've probably seen enough of those in practice. What does that do to you guys when someone like him gets up and, and does it from an energy level? Yeah, it, a dunk is one of the most exciting plays in basketball. And it's, 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 a, it's a moment that creates energy. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, I think we'll see our fair share of those over the course of the season from him. And, and it's something that, um, you know, we don't set out to create a bunch of them. You know, I think we're getting to a point where naturally we're going to have some of those things happen where he, you know, he can play in space that very few can. So, um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting play, and I think our fans will come to enjoy it, and hopefully the uh, rims can hold it. <laughs> Tevin Jones, update? <clears throat> Not playing. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.